the newest completely free update to Deep Rock Galactic is finally here. Update 33 called New Frontiers launches on February 4th with a ton of new content. If you don't want to know anything about the new update until you get to experience it for yourself, this is your last chance to hop off the video before you'll see some major spoilers. In this video, we're going to talk about what the new content being added to Deep Rock Galactic is. If this is a good time to come back to DRG if you've been away for a while, or a great starting point to pick up the game if you've never played, and you're thinking about playing Deep Rock Galactic for the first time, as well as my overall thoughts on the update and if this is a great start to 2020 for longtime fans of DRG. We've got a lot to cover in this video, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get recommended the dozens of helpful videos and builds that are already here for you, as well as get notified when many more Deep Rock Galactic builds get uploaded, like what builds beginners and returning players should use. My name is Legionless, and this channel is about helping you enjoy your games more. It's been a long time since new biomes have been added to the game, and with update 33, we've got two brand new ones. There are now a total of 10 biomes, all pretty unique from each other that not only change the scenery you're playing in, but quite a few of them have their own dangers as well. The first new biome is Azure Wield, a chilly, hostile biome that's oddly beautiful with its dazzling bioluminescent clusters of lichen to light up the darkness around you. This new new biome is equal parts beautiful and horrifying. Hollow Bow, the second new biome, is a biological oddity that has the science department back at DRG headquarters confused. The entire biome is ruled by an assortment of giant, deadly plants. You'll need to step carefully here because even the most docile looking of the environment is prepared to kill you. If you've never played Deep Rock Galactic, these new biomes give you a bigger, more immersive of world to complete your missions in, and in my opinion, makes the replayability even better. There's more areas for the missions you'll be running to look different, but these two new biomes also play differently, especially Hollow Bow. You'll need to move around a lot more and even be more aware of your surroundings because in past biomes, the environment itself has never really gone out of its way to attack. Sure, there's been lava geysers, but those just erupt in a straight line. They don't curve and track towards you. For returning players with a lot of hours in the game, it's not really something that'll bring you back if you found yourself with not a lot to do anymore. If you've completed and achieved most of what DRG has, or at least most of the stuff you wanted to do, the new biomes alone aren't a good enough reason to bring you back. What is a really good reason for you to come back for at least a short visit are the new boss fights added to the game. The same old, same old Dreadnought bosses you'd fight over and over again definitely lost a lot of their challenge after you beat the same boss dozens, if not hundreds of times. Two new bosses have been added to elimination missions, the Dreadnought Hiveguard, and the twin bosses the Dreadnought Arbalist and Dreadnought Lacerator. If you found the original Dreadnought to be a chump, let me tell you, these two new boss fights were not chumps. They weren't extremely difficult to the point of feeling completely out of place with the rest of the game, but they were really, really exciting and engaging to fight. They each bring new mechanics to the table, and all of the new bosses have new ways of challenging and killing you. The Hive Guard boss is completely immune to all damage, only being vulnerable for a small window when enraged. It calls in two to three Glyphid Sentinels to fight alongside it, which are fairly easy enemies to kill, and once the Sentinel are defeated, the Hive Guard's armor can be broken, and then its weak point is opened up where you can finally bring it down. The Arbalist and Lacerator twins are two fast and agile bosses that attack you from a multitude of ranges. One will fight you up close while its twin prefers to bombard you for range. They both have less health than the Glyphid or Hive Guard dreadnoughts, but they're able to share health when you damage one more than the other. They don't regain any health 
just the remaining health between the two gets evenly shared. The twin bosses were definitely my favorite fight when I played against them on the experimental branch, but only because of a small annoyance with the Dreadnought Hiveguard. The minor nitpick with the Hiveguard fight is if you're in a smallish cave when it summons its sentinels, a sentinel can sometimes spawn away from the area you're in. It can spawn in the adjacent room to where the boss currently is if that room is close enough to where the hive guard is when it summons help. Quite a few times I was running around really unsure of where the last sentinel was I needed to kill so I could damage the boss again. It's not that big of a deal, but definitely just something to remember when you fight the hive guard yourself. These are all the most important additions to the game coming with update 33, but there's also quite a bit more minor changes coming. I'm just going to quickly list those so you guys know what's going to be different when you log in on February 4th, and then we'll talk about the overall new update, if it's a good time to come back as a returning player, and is this a great time to buy Deep Rock Galactic as a new player? During salvage missions, all you need to do now is find the broken mule, and you'll be able to interact with it, and the missing legs will appear on your map. At the end of the salvage mission, you'll connect the fuel to the fuel cells using a fuel line like during the on-site refining mission. The Mineheads model and port extraction missions have been updated from an old look looking asset to a new looking piece of the game. There's also a few new enemies like the Mactera Trijaw, which is a new Mactera that hangs at the back of the Mactera pack that shoots a triple barrage of projectiles. There's also the Mactera Brundle, which is an armored Mactera seen in the middle of a swarm. They have a much harder and stronger shell than the normal Mactera, so they won't go down quite as quickly from body shot damage, but their abdomens are still extremely fragile agile, even if covered up most of the time. There's the Deep Tora Bot Wasp, which is a small wasp swarm that are extremely territorial and will attack you if you get too close to their nest. These can only be found in the Hollow Bow biome. There's the Stabber Vine, which is a very aggressive and persistent plant that will attack anyone that gets too close. There's also eight new copyright free songs added to the jukebox. If you're a streamer, these will be the only songs you here when the jukebox is playing and you have the streamer mode disable copyright jukebox music ticked off in your options menu. Some new dance moves have also been added when you're listening to tunes at the jukebox. The Steam Award nomination helmet, the Horned Marauder, was also added, so make sure to log into the game to get your free cosmetic helmet. The Mineral Trade menu has also been completely overhauled by management. Before, it was a clunky, unintuitive system, but now it's better than ever. Once per day, you can even benefit from an extra good deal, so those of you new newer to the game or still unlocking upgrades and new overclocks, it's now even easier to get some of the crafting materials you need. One of the most requested features brought up almost as soon as Doretta was introduced in the escort duty mission last fall is finally here. Now you no longer need to leave sweet and hard working Doretta in the darkness of the cave at the end of a mission. You can grab Doretta's head and carry it out with you to the drop pod. So there's quite a few minor new things and changes coming with update 33, along with the two new biomes and the two new very awesome boss encounters. If you've never played Deep Rock Galactic before, right now is truly an amazing time to get into the game. DRG was one of Steam's top rated and top sold games the entire year of 2020. In 2020, the game had 310,000 monthly active users. Over over 2 million copies have been sold since 2018, with almost 1.2 million of that coming from 2020 alone. It has a 97% positive Steam review rating, and the average player plays for 31 hours. Deep Rock Galactic is truly worth the $29.99 USD, but if you're still on the fence, it goes on sale all of the time for about $21 USD, so make sure to wishlist the game and pick it up. 
you will never need to pay more money than that one-time price. The developers of Deep Rock Galactic firmly believe in not charging a penny for the additional content that gets added to the game. They are completely funded by the entirely optional cosmetic supporter DLC packs you can buy for a couple bucks each. Trust me, this is a game you will love and 100% should play if you have not already, and Update 33 is the perfect time to do so. If you've already put in hundreds of hours, unlocked every upgrade, every overclock for every weapon, and gotten all of the cosmetics for all four classes, is Update 33 enough to bring you back? Honestly, if you've got everything out of the game already, Update 33 is a content drop that you should probably play for 5 to 10 hours, just so you can experience the beautiful new biomes they added, and the awesome new boss encounters that were created. If you loved the game already, these are great reasons to come back and spend some time playing an amazing game some more, but it's probably not the type of deeper content you've been waiting for that will keep you hooked for a long time. There's nothing wrong with the new content being what it is, which is an even better entry point for new players that'll give players a few hundred hours of even better, more replayable content, as well as add a little more depth to the replayability and enjoyment of the players that are already non-stop playing DRG. It's just that the new content that would need to be added to bring players back more permanently would need to be more progression and things to chase and earn, like new weapons and overclocks. Fortunately though, it sounds like that's exactly what they're working on for their next update, so if you want to save those moments when you enter the two new biomes for the first time, update 34 in the spring will have so much stuff for you to come back to, and a lot of that content that you're really looking for. Update 33 is a fantastic time to pick up Deep Rock Galactic for the first time. There's dozens and dozens of hours worth of content for you to play, and you can easily get hundreds of hours out of your one-time purchase. You'll never need to pay again to get the new content that's added to the game. If you're someone that's seen and done it all already, definitely check out the new biomes a couple times, and you need to experience the Dreadnought Hiveguard and the Twins Lacerator and Arbalist. If you're still waiting for new things to chase like new weapons, you won't have to wait much longer since the developers have strongly hinted that that's all coming in the next update, which should be sometime in the spring. So probably closer to May. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to get recommended more Deep Rock Galactic content and like this video to help me out. Thanks for watching.